So, you're struggling to get glass to work in Blender, whether that's a fancier shading with caustics, or your glass and subsurface scattering just isn't working in Eevee. Well, today we're going to tackle all of these issues, so let's get started. First of all, I'm going to change my timeline to the shader editor. Then, I'm going to press Shift and then A to open my add menu, and left click UV Sphere. Then, I'll press Ctrl 1 to add a subdivision surface of 1. I'll left click my wrench icon here, which is the modifier properties menu, and change the render down to 1. Then then with my UV sphere selected, I'll right click and left click shade smooth. Then I'll press shift A and this time I'll add a plane, G, Z, minus 1 to bring it down. Then press S to scale and then 10 and that will scale it by 10. Then I'll press shift and then A and I'll left click cube. Then I'll press G, shift Z to move it on only the X and Y axis. This cube will be a way to check if our glass is working, and this plane will be a way to see how our shadows look for the glass. Now I'm going to come into my world properties here, and I'm just going to add a basic shading environment. I'm going to make sure I'm in the cycles render engine, and I'm going to left click my render preview. I can left click these two circles here to turn off the environment so we can just see it for what it is. I want to add a few lights into my scene. So I'll press Shift and then A, then under Light, I'm going to left click Area Light, and I'll press G and Z to bring this one up. I'll left click this light bulb here, and I'm going to set the power to, let's say, 50. Press G and Z and pull up a little bit more, and I'll press G Shift Z. I'm going to move it a little bit away from my sphere. Pretty basic lighting, but that'll do for now. I'm going to left click these two circles again so I can see what I'm selecting. I'm going to left click my sphere. Then in my shader editor, I'm going to left click plus new. Then to turn Turn this into a glass shader, I'm going to left click transmission to highlight and then type in the number 1. I'll then turn my roughness down to let's say 0 0.0. Two. Already, here in Cycles, you can see we're getting a nice shading effect, but we can give ourselves a little bit more control over this, since your reference may have a brighter shadow, for example. So how do we go about giving us the power to control that? Also, a quick thing I'm going to do is change my IOR to 1.511, which is the IOR for window soda lime glass, as found in my IOR guide. I'll press Shift A, my shader editor, and under Shader, I'm going to left click Mix Shader. Plug that in between the material output and the principled, and I'm just going to zoom in so we can see things a little bit better. I'll press Shift A again, then under Shader, I'm going to use the Transparent BSDF. Now if we remember from the shader video, when the Transparent BSDF color is white, it will be completely see-through, and when it is black, it will be completely opaque. So this is how we're going to control our shadow. As you can see, Blender can't differentiate between the shadow and just the glass. So to fix that, we're going to use the light path we didn't use in the last episode, and that's called the Is Shadow Ray. So press Shift A, then in input, I'm going to left click Light Path. Left click to place it, and I'm going to drag out Is Shadow Ray into the factor. Now, by default, since our transparent BSDF is set to white, our shadow is going to be completely transparent. And as I bring it closer to black, you can see we can make our glass shadow a little bit darker. So this can be great because now we have a control over how dark our light our shadow is. So we can better match it to our reference image. Option 2. For option 2, we're going to be using Blender's Caustics. These will give us a slightly more realistic shadow, although it is more demanding on performance. So for now, I'm going to drag my principal BSDF and plug it into the surface. Then, under my object properties, I'm going to scroll down and under shading, I'm going to open up this window, then on caustics, Keep in mind, I've got my UV sphere selected while I'm doing this. So I'm going to left click cast shadow caustics because this is an object that's going to cast the caustic effect onto the plane. So then the plane will left click that and we will left click receive shadow caustics. But you'll notice that it's still not working. And that's because we need to set our area lamp to caustics. So I'll left click the bulb and turn on shadow caustics. And now you can see quite a drastic change has been made. This is what Blender has determined would be the result with caustics. And the good thing is about this other shader we've made, if I plug my mix shader back into the surface, I can tweak the color of the shadow even further. So these two can be combined together or used separately. Just keep in mind that caustics are quite performance heavy, so you'll want to be careful while using them. I'm going to plug my principal BSDF back into my surface. Now I'm going to left click my render properties properties and I'm going to change it into Eevee. Straight away you can see we've got a big issue, we can't see through the glass. Since Eevee seems a little bit darker here, I'm going to left click my area lamp and I'm going to change my power to 100 in the light bulb settings. There we go, much better. To get our glass to work in Eevee, we're going to need to turn on a few different options. First, in my material properties window, which you can find here is this red checkered sphere, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to left click screen space refraction under settings in my sphere. Then what I'm going to do is left click 
on my render properties and I'm going to turn on screen space reflections and turn on refraction. Now you can see we can see through the glass. Keep in mind this won't look quite as good as it does in cycles and that's simply because EV isn't as good at handling glass. I can also turn off half res trace, turn on up my trace precision to make it a little bit better. I can also turn on some other EV improving settings like bloom, ambient occlusion, I'll turn my ambient occlusion distance to one and I can also turn up my shadow size. So if I'm doing a really really nice render I'll put this all the way up to 4096. Just keep in mind the higher you set these two or especially the cascade size the longer render times will be so for now I'm going to keep this at 1024 pixels and I'm going to set cube size to that as well I also turn on height high bit depth shadows and you can also turn off any kind of soft shadows by simply pressing this I'll put that back on though and this is great but we can see that our shadow is a little bit too bright so we can just simply plug in our mix shader back into our surface and now the power to control this has been returned to us but something's wrong even when we're changing it, we're noticing no real noticeable difference. And that's because we need to change another setting on our sphere. So I'll left click on our render properties and I'm going to change our shadow mode to alpha hashed. You can also change it to alpha clip, that seems to work. I'm not very knowledgeable on these shadow modes, but I found that both alpha hashed and alpha clip work fine. And now when I change my transparent BSDF color, you can see I can now alter how bright it is to make a more realistic shadow for our glass. Again, I would recommend referring to a reference in order to make sure you get this right. You could also, if you wanted, alter the IOR to something less realistic in order to get a glass result you're more happy with. But for cycles, I would always recommend sticking with the most realistic option, which for us is 1.511. I'm going to left click this material.001, I'm going to call it glass. Awesome. Now I'm going to left click this X and I'll press plus new. For now I'm going to go back into cycles, so I'll left click EV and change it to cycles. I'm going to leave my subsurface radius as it is and I'm going to put this up to 1, just so you can clearly see the effect. Now as it's loading up, you can see our subsurface effect and I might even change our base color to a more kind of peachy color, just for example. Now you can see in cycles our subsurface scattering is working nice and fine, but what about EV? Well, if I change, straight away you can see we still have a little bit of subsurface here, but we can definitely improve this. First of all, I'm going to leave all these settings as they are. You can also alter the subsurface scattering here. Turning up the samples, I believe, will just turn up the quality. Then, in my material properties here, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to turn on subsurface translucency. And now you can see we're getting a better subsurface scattering result. Great, that's as finished. Well done for following this tutorial. I know it seemed like quite a simple topic, but I feel like it was important to cover since you're bound to encounter these issues at some point in your 3D career. Now we're going to have a quick quiz. Number one, what method can we use to control how bright or dark the glass shadows are? Number two, what settings do we need to enable for transmission seeing through glass to work in EV? Number three, what options do we need to enable to allow caustics to be displayed? I'll be answering the questions in 15 seconds from now. Number one, what method can we use to control how bright or dark the glass shadows are? For this, we use the light path node, a mix shader, and the transparent BSDF. On the light path node, we used the is shadow ray and plugged it into the factor. This allowed us to use the transparent BSDF to control how bright or dark the shadow is. If we set our transparent BSDF to completely white, our shadow would be completely invisible, transparent. And if we set it to black, it would be completely opaque. Number two, what settings do we need to enable for transmission to work on Eevee. To do this, we first need to go into the material properties of our glass material and turn on screen space refraction. Then in our render properties, we need to turn on screen space reflections, turn on refraction, and optionally, you can turn off half rest trace for a more accurate result or better looking result. Number three, what options do we need to enable to allow caustics to be displayed? First of all, in our object with our glass material it selected, we go into the object properties 
properties, making sure we're in cycles since caustics is a cycles feature, and we'll turn on cast shadow caustics. And we'll turn on cast shadow caustics, which means that this object will be casting the caustics effect since it's the glass. And we'll do this for all our glass objects. For all the objects that will have the shadows hitting it, such as the plane, our example, we would want to do the same thing but turn on receive shadow caustics and leave cast shadow caustics turned off. Finally, we'll left click on our light source, which you may have multiple of, and in our object data properties, which on the light source looks like a light bulb, we turn on our shadow caustics. We can also combine this method with the method we touched on in the first question in the quiz in order to have further control over how our shadow looks. Great job everyone for completing the quiz. If you want to let me know what your answer as well. You can type them in the comments below and I'll mark them for you. If you have any other questions about this tutorial, feel free to ask me and I'll do my best to answer them to the best of my ability. In the next episode, we're going to be covering what maps are, such as roughness map, diffuse map and normal map. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.